Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Canadian Prairie. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Temperatures across the prairie right now generally in the mid to upper teens as we watch a warming trend once again across the region. A trough of low pressure beginning to move in from the west. We can see that right here approaching uh, across the Pacific Northwest, across western Canada. That's going to start a more active pattern here, especially in the west here with more frequent chances for some showers and storms. So take a look at the radar here early on this Wednesday morning again. We do have some showers moving through the Edmonton area, uh, maybe a few showers overnight in the Calgary area. And we're going to continue again to see uh, this first wave kind of just make its way from west to east as we head through the next several days. But it's the first of many as we head into next week. So we'll look at the precipitation forecast from the high resolution NAM model. We'll go ahead and just jump back here and watch this first wave move from west to east. Heading through the afternoon hours today into the evening, we'll watch for those showers and storms to kind of flare up from southern uh, Alberta into central and southern Saskatchewan. That'll be the region for scattered showers and storms during the afternoon and evening today. That activity moves off to the east, kind of dies out during the overnight, still some raindrops possible, but then as we head into the afternoon hours on uh, Thursday tomorrow, we'll watch for that thunderstorm chance to be greatest across far southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. We'll then take this on into midday on Friday. We'll get to uh, Friday here right around noon. First storm system is making its way out of here, getting off to the east as we get into Friday. But then we've got our next wave beginning to emerge uh, so that by Friday afternoon, Friday evening, they'll be seeing a few showers and storms flaring up again across central and southern Alberta as this next wave starts to make its way uh, out across the prairie. And then as we get into Saturday, We'll talk about this more as we get into Friday's forecast, but we'll likely be looking at this region again from southern Alberta into central and southern Saskatchewan for more shower and storm activity uh, with a pretty unstable air mass. We could be talking about a couple strong storms here as we head through the next week as well. Let's look at the instability forecast with this first wave. And again, we'll kind of use that to track where the thunderstorms will be most likely and then go ahead and uh, go from there. So here. We get to this afternoon and evening, where do we have the greatest instability? It's exactly where uh, I kind of highlighted that area, southern Alberta into central and southern Saskatchewan. The best chance for some storms today, maybe a strong storm or two producing some large hail or some gusty winds. As we head into the afternoon on Thursday, uh, here we go, southeastern Saskatchewan into central and southern Manitoba, that best chance for a couple strong storms, maybe producing some hail and some strong gusty winds. Let's go ahead and head into Friday afternoon. Friday evening, this first wave has pushed off to the east, so our best thunderstorm chance is going to be uh, east of the prairie, off across southern Ontario. And then on Saturday, wave number two starts to make its way in. We've got kind of some weak instability across portions of central and southern Alberta, getting into central and southern Saskatchewan. Again, that's where our chance for thunderstorms will be the greatest. So between now and noon on Saturday, you can kind of just watch the precipitation corridor here from west to east. It's going to be uh, unevenly distributed. Some people may end up getting completely missed. Others might pick up a quick 25 to 40 millimeters of precipitation from one of these thunderstorms. And then the others are going to fall just somewhere in between that. So not a heavy soaking rain event here over the next three days. Although some locally heavy precipitation from some of these storms is certainly possible. As we just look at the next 10 days, though, from the European Ensemble model, we are heading into a much more active pattern uh, that's going to favor some, some above normal or above average precipitation here across a huge chunk of the prairie. Heaviest in the west, but the caveat to that, uh, where it's going to be coolest and heaviest uh, with the precipitation in the west, uh, where the precipitation is more scattered in nature and where we're a little bit warmer than average, this is the region I'd be most concerned about for severe storms as we head through the next week. So. Heaviest precipitation, flood risk, going to be found off to the west and to the southwest. Uh, warmest conditions and the chance for more severe weather is going to be found just off to uh, the east as we head through the next 10 days. The reason for all this, we kind of mentioned it in the Monday morning video, but watching this trough kind of dive down to the south and anchor itself, uh, creating big changes in our jet stream. We'll go ahead and put that into motion as, as we go through the next five to seven days. There it is, dropping down across the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. And so jet stream flow coming around that uh, with this trough here that's going to lead to cooler conditions coming in uh, with the the axis of this trough that's where the heaviest precipitation is going to be where those strongest uh, jet stream winds are coming around the base of that trough but then to the east of that this is where we'll have unseasonably warm conditions just off to the east of that trough axis getting closer to that ridge anchored across the hudson bay down through ontario and that's why in this area where we're a bit warmer than average, we've still got the strong jet stream flow, an unstable air mass, 
Uh, we're going to be talking about more scattered precipitation instead of widespread precipitation, but that scattered precipitation could take the form of several rounds of uh, strong to severe thunderstorms across especially eastern portions of the prairie. So we'll look at the temperature forecast over the next five to seven days. And again, you're going to see it kind of uh, trending back towards warm across the entire prairie as we head into the weekend. But as that trough begins to dive down and anchor itself across the west, uh, we'll see cooler temperatures, uh, at least a little bit cooler than average as we head into early next week in the west uh, with unseasonably warm temperatures across the east. So again, we do this kind of west-east difference here, coolest in the west, warmest in the east. Again, the heaviest precipitation along with that cooler air mass here back toward the west. And then uh, where we're doing more scattered precipitation with that warmer than average conditions off to the east, that's where we'll see the chance for less wide precipitation, but potentially more severe uh, activity across uh, the eastern portions of the prairie. So let's wrap it up then with a look at the precipitation forecast and surface pressure from the European uh, operational model. Uh, bringing it back to this afternoon, again watching for the chance for scattered showers and storms across this region as we head through the afternoon and evening hours today. Those uh, showers and storms could continue, though they should weaken during the overnight, during the, uh, or during the overnight, that's what I was trying to say. And then Thursday, uh, we'll watch for that chance tomorrow across southeastern Saskatchewan into central and southern Manitoba. That first wave gets out of here on Friday. We then reload on Saturday with that chance for a couple scattered storms uh, across southern Alberta into central and southern uh, Saskatchewan as we get into Saturday afternoon and evening with heavier rain showers possible across the Peace River region through Edmonton off into northern Saskatchewan on Saturday afternoon and evening. And then this really sets us up for that active phase here where we've got divergence here, upper level divergence, those winds uh, fast and spreading out, fanning out across the prairie that leads to a lot of upward vertical motion and the atmosphere and with this uh, humid summer air mass in place across the region that's going to lead to a lot of precipitation again heaviest most widespread in the west but the problem off to the east is going to be more scattered warmer uh, uh, conditions and more scattered precipitation with warmer conditions that chance for some strong storms so here we are getting into sunday getting into monday we'll talk about the details on these ones as we get a bit closer but just notice the pattern here we're kind of reloading with storm systems across the prairie even as we head into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So absolutely heading into a much more active pattern. And again, to sum it up, coolest in the West, heaviest precipitation in the West, warmest in the, the East, uh, with slightly less precipitation, more scattered in nature, with the potential for several rounds of severe storms as we head to the next seven days. We can see that severe weather risk here with our proprietary uh, nutrient uh, thunderstorm environment index and what it does is not necessarily show the likelihood of severe storms but shows the environment that those thunderstorms would be tapping into we can see that air mass here let's look at uh, this afternoon let's for the example four to seven o'clock again same region southern alberta central and southern saskatchewan we can confirm tomorrow's risk here thursday four to uh, seven p.m uh, where the environment is pinging those warmer colors southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. Let's take it into next week, though, and take a look at what we're looking at here. We'll get into Saturday, starting to see that risk again kind of flaring back up across the prairie as we get into Sunday. There you see it again across southern portions of uh, Saskatchewan into Manitoba. Let's kind of reload things again on Monday. So you're seeing it here Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, potentially here, let's take it into Tuesday, looking at parts of central and southern Manitoba. So uh, really kind of just reloading things here uh, as we talk about especially southern Saskatchewan uh, and southern Manitoba here. This is where I think we're going to see the kind of the reloading of a volatile air mass here underneath those very strong jet stream winds coming in from the southwest. So I am concerned here about a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, potentially into Tuesday uh, threat for severe storms across the Canadian prairie. The potential for heavy rain, again, heaviest in the west. We're looking at the probability of more than one inch of rain falling between now and the next uh, 10 days. Uh, and that, of course, would be 25 millimeters of precipitation. And where you're seeing the red shading here, that maroon red shading, that's where we're near 100%. So uh, fairly likely we're going to get a good drink here across central and southern Alberta, all the way back into the Peace River region and across central Saskatchewan and even regions where we get into, uh, you know, southern Manitoba where... Uh, we're talking about more scattered precipitation, still a 50 to 60 percent chance here, or a probability of picking up at least 25 millimeters of precipitation over the next 7 to 10 days. So we'll look at those temperatures falling off here in Calgary, again warming up to the upper 20s by the time we get to Friday, but then that trough anchors in. We see several cool days with highs in the teens, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, Monday. And we look at Edmonton, a similar look here, not quite as cool 
Regina, you're going to be holding out of those temperatures in the mid to upper 20s, even as we head into early next week. Saskatoon, a similar look here. And then in Winnipeg, we'll be dealing with some unseasonably warm conditions on the uh, east side of this storm system here. High temperatures in the low 30s as we get into the weekend into early next week with that chance for periodic strong to severe storms.